Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 104. Ford is upping their game when it comes to the transition to EVs. But Tesla is quickly catching up to both GM and Ford when it comes to their bottom line. And recycling of batteries are already a profitable business according to JP Straubel. And Tesla is as dominating in Australia as they are in the US. And Elon will next week give us an update on the Starship. And is the Tesla Model 2 cancelled? Well, watch this news episode to find out, because all of this and much, much more on today's episode. Start right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Let's start by getting it out of the way. No, the Tesla Model 2 is not dead, as I have seen many talk about on the internet. Yes, Elon said at the earnings call they will not focus on the compact model right now, because all their focus is on getting as many cars out as possible in 2022, and they never said anything about the compact car for 2022. So I don't know why people are getting so worked up about this. Tesla said they will come out with a $25,000 car in 2020 three not 22 and people has also been writing about how elon lied because if they were focusing on the model 2 they could make more cars because it would need less batteries but i would have to disagree with that firstly a brand new model means that they would have to build a brand new production line and then ramp that one up and as we have seen with Tesla's other factories and ramp up of the Model 3 or the Model Y, it does take about a year for them to ramp up production for a new production line. So even if Tesla was able to make a new production line this year for the Tesla Model 2 or whatever it's called, it would not be produced in high volumes compared to Model 3 and Model Y that Tesla already has production rate of, of over 500,000 each and remember tesla is not battery constrained here in 2022 so it will not help tesla at all that the compact car uses less batteries but it will hurt tesla that they might only be able to produce about a hundred thousand of these cars if they tried and take resources from the production of the model 3 and model y tesla only has so many resources and those production line the model 3 and model y are already full steam ahead and tesla did reveal the twenty-five thousand dollar car on battery day because the reason why tesla can make the twenty-five thousand dollar car is because of the new battery that will cut the price in half of the battery and if the battery at the same time can be smaller in the compact car tesla could really make the cost of the battery for these cars very low compared to what they have today but tesla Tesla does have a production line up and ready to go for the Model Y in Texas that will be using the 4680 cells, which they are actually battery constrained on. But again, that plant is ready to go with the production line of the Model Y, not a Model 2. So this would definitely slow down Tesla if they try to make a Model 2 this year. So I think Tesla is doing the right thing here and so far they are just doing what they said they would make a $25,000 car in 2023, not 2022. It had never been the plan. So yes, the Cybertruck and the Semi-Truck is being delayed. But again, that is because those two products also need the 4680 cells. And the production of those batteries is only happening right now at the pilot plant at Fremont. So their production is not as high as Tesla has hoped for by now. But for those people not thinking that the battery is real, well, Giga Texas is right now, as we speak, producing the Model Y with 4680 cells in them. So they are real, and Tesla has been producing them in small volumes at the Fremont factory for about two years now. So of course they do have a big pile of these batteries from that planned but need to get the production line going at the giga texas factory before they can start making any other vehicles that need that battery that being the cyber truck the semi truck or the little compact twenty-five thousand dollar car 
any of these new production line of a new product will slow Tesla down in production volume. And if that would mean that Tesla would not be able to make the 1.6 but only 1.3 million vehicles in 2022, just as an example, well, Tesla earns about $10,000 per vehicle they sell. So that would be a loss about $3 billion to Tesla in profits, not revenue. And that is not even counting in that the new Tesla Model 2 would not make as much profit as the 3 and the Y in the beginning before they can get to high volume production of that car. So it would not make any sense whatsoever for Tesla to try to push this car into production in 2022. But it is not dead. Tesla's focus is just of course not on this little car here in 2022 and has never been the plan. EV volumes finally updated their numbers. So now we can see just how the plug-in market share did in 2021. And it shows that the plug-in market did not just grow twice in size, it ended up being a little bit over, in fact, 108% growth in 2021. And the people that are blind to this S-curve that is happening right now and don't believe that EVs would take over very fast are simply not looking at what is happening right now. Now, and if you are in doubt of who is actually leading, because there have been some weird claims about who is leading the EV race, well, just look at this top 10 list of the best-selling EV models in all of 2021 globally. Number one, that was of course the Tesla Model 3 with just over 500,000 units. Just beaten the little shoebox of the car, the Wuling Mini EV, that is only big in China and sold 424,000 units. And number three was the Model Y with over 411,000 vehicles. A car that was said to be vaporware by the short sellers only three years ago. Just like to say the Model 2 is vaporware now and the Marie was the true competition to this car. But as I said one year ago, it is not competition when the Model Y sells 10 times as many units as the Mark E, and they did, they are just not in the same league. Just as we can see, the rest of the list here is not in the same league as Tesla. Number four is the ID4, but just look at the numbers. They drop off a cliff from number three to number four. There are the top three, and then there are all the rest. And just look at the jump the Tesla Model Y has made last year from 80 thousand to 411,000 in just one year. It is also a very good showcase of just how fast Tesla is to scale up production than anyone else. Just take Ford and their Mark E. They had a whole year in 2021, but only managed to produce just south of 70,000 units and sold about 50,000 units. And Tesla just raised the stake with 320,000 in one year alone. People that think Ford and GM will ever catch up to Tesla's production in EVs are kidding themselves. They are definitely not looking at the data. And no, the Model Y did not eat all of Tesla Model 3 sales as many short sellers also proclaimed. That car just jumped from 365,000 units to 501,000 units. So the Model 3 alone sold more units globally in 2021 than the entire Volkswagen group combined with all its brands like Audi, Volkswagen, Seat, Skoda, Porsche. Combined sales did not even beat the Tesla Model 3. And just take a look at this list if you want to know how the future is going to play out. There is Tesla leading the race. And then there are two other Western models, the ID4 and the little Renault Zoe, and the rest are Chinese. And no, you won't find GM on the top 10 list. But the Wuling, yes, GM is only an investor in Wuling. They do not own it and are not producing anything, even though they take full credit of all the units sold of the Wuling Mini EV. Just as we can see here in this chart for EV volumes, it looked like GM produced almost 50,000 BEVs in 2021. But that is just not true. The Wuling Mini EV is a joint venture between Chinese state-owned automakers. 
SAIC and Guangxi Auto and GM. But GM is not producing it, so GM only owns like one third of the company but take full credit of all the units sold. And they only earn like $14 in profit per Wulin Mini EV sold. So GM earns about $6 million from these 424,000 Wulin Mini E sold. Wow, what a great business there, GM. Where Tesla earned about $5 billion in profit on just the Model 3. Yeah, GM is not even in the game yet, and they are already proclaiming themselves as the leader in the EV race. Just merry embarrassing. They have stopped saying Tesla killers, because that's clearly not going to happen, but they are coming up with some interesting headlines. Now Tesla is having nightmares about the competition. <laughs> really? Yes, the Ionic 5 is a great EV, but to say it gives Tesla nightmare is just ridiculous. Here in Europe, it has sold a total of 18,000 units in 2021. Tesla's Model 3 sold 118,000 units in 2021. Even on a global scale, the Ionic 5 did sell about 70,000 units, so still less than the Model 3 did in Europe alone. The Tesla Model 3 sold over 500,000 units, as I just said, so still outselling the IQ5 7 to 1. <laughs> Don't think this give Tesla nightmares. So a great EV, the Ionic 5, not trying to take anything away from the Ionic 5, but no, it is not giving Tesla nightmares. Just like the Jaguar I-Pace did not give Tesla nightmares, even though it was dubbed the Tesla killer. It sold less than 10,000 units last year, but now here in 2022, Jaguar will make it available in a premium black pack option. So I guess that should give Tesla nightmares as well, right? Does it come in black? Yes, it does come in black. Be scared, Tesla, be scared. People tend to forget what hell Tesla has gone through and nearly went bankrupt to time. It is not an easy feat transitioning your ICE company over to EVs or making a pure EV car company from scratch as Tesla has done. Just look at some of the other so-called Tesla killers like the Faraday FF91. Remember that car? Yes, they filed for bankruptcy in the US, but did go public last year and are still around and kicking, but maybe not for long as they are under investigation for lying about the numbers of pre-orders they have. Yes, that car does not exist and probably never will, just like the Byton, another Tesla killer that has never seen the day of light. So what Tesla has done is not easy. No matter if you're an EV startup that get crazy high valuations straight away just for being an EV startup, thanks to Tesla, or if you are a legacy automaker trying to make this transition. Ford is one that is really trying to make this transition to EVs, and they just up their game once again. Firstly, Ford is now planning to increase its EV budget by as much as another $20 billion. That is on top of their $30 billion they are already putting on the table. Also a good indication of just how difficult this transition is for Legacy Auto. Tesla has never spent $20 billion to get to where they are today. They have spent less than $10 billion on R&D over the last decade and only have a debt of $5.2 billion. And that is just to put it in perspective that Ford is about to spend $50 billion on its EV effort. But maybe Ford is cooking on something behind the scenes. According to a report from Bloomberg, Ford is making plans to restructure for more successful electronic vehicle future and according to Bloomberg part of the potential plan could include creating an EV spin-off in an attempt to capture some of that immense value investors are giving electric startups. The details came from people who asked to remain anonymous since the plan has not been made public. But this is what many people have said it might be the only way for many of the legacy OEM to survive make an EV spin-off and let the old ice come company go bankrupt over time. Maybe this is the first step we are seeing for taking towards that, but we have to wait and see what they will announce publicly, of course. But Jim Farley has not been afraid lately to 
praise Tesla and Elon Musk, as we also heard last week in an interview with Bloomberg. You congratulated Elon Musk on being Times Person of the Year. What are you learning from uh, Elon Musk and a Tesla? Lot. A lot. I think the, the thing that, that I learned the most is that what it takes to succeed in this digital, connected, electric product are talents and know-how and a way of managing the business that's different than what we've done in 118 years. It's kind of like snowboarding and skiing. Um, we, both, we both share the lift, but as soon as you get off the lift, the intuitions are wrong between both businesses. You know, you kind of have to relearn how to get down the slope. And I really admire, frankly, the, the difficulties they had mm -hmm. and the way they managed those difficulties into the success they had. Um, they're now making more than $10,000 a vehicle uh, because of their scale. I, I like that kind of business. Yeah, so Jim liked that Tesla can earn about $10,000 per vehicle, and Ford is trying to get the cost down of their electric car. As Jim said, Ford has a team dedicated to reducing costs from the bill of materials for EVs and was recently able to reduce the Ford Mustang Mark E's cost by $1,000. So that is great. So now they're probably just losing less money. <laughs> but they are heading the right way. But to put it in perspective, just how great Tesla is doing. Tesla had $8.7 billion in adjusted EBIT, and Ford has just announced $10 billion in adjusted EBIT. And Tesla had $6.5 billion in operating income, and Ford had $4.5 billion. And Ford sold close to 4 million vehicles, and Tesla sold 937,000 vehicles, but had $2 billion more in operating income. Just imagine where Tesla will be when they get to 4 million vehicles. And Ford has a target of 11.5 to 12.5 billion dollars in 2022 in adjusted EBIT. And GM announced a target of 13 to 15 billion dollars in adjusted EBIT. And Tesla will only focus on growing in 2022, so I believe that they will grow about 100% give or take, but it's only with the models they have already out and ramping up. So Tesla's margins should just get better and better in 2022. So Tesla should beat both Ford and GM in adjusted EBIT this year. But I do really like the way Jim is trying to explain how different the company has to be run compared to how they have been doing it for 118 years and how he's learning a lot from Elon Musk and Tesla. And they are setting a lot of new things in motion, but we will see if this will be fast enough for them to survive or if they did wake up a bit too late. Because I'm still surprised that Ford is surprised by the EV demand they see. Are they really not keeping more up with what's going on in the industry? I do sometimes also get some comments about, do you really think that Ford and GM has not thought of that when you have thought of that? Well, these kind of comments from Jim Farley is just making me think they are truly living in their own little bubble. Ford is waking up and trying to transition faster and is no longer afraid of saying the name that shall not be said, Tesla. I know they are the leader, but that demand exceeds their expectation when they originally only had a plan for 40,000 F-150 Lightnings for 2024 before they doubled their target twice to 160,000 units in 2024. And they now want to do more but how blind can you be if you truly believed that there is not a demand for more than 40,000 electric pickup trucks in 2024? I kind of hope they're lying and they have always known that the demand was much higher, but they just hoped they could slow down the transition to EVs so they could keep selling some more ICE cars for a bit longer because the transition is going to be very difficult and expensive because it would be kind of embarrassing if they didn't see this coming from a mile away. If so, they should not give their R&D a lot of money because they're clearly not doing a very good job. And recycling of batteries are already a profitable business, according to J.B. Straubel. 
In a recent interview with J.B. Straubel, one of the founders of Tesla, that is now running redwood materials that are recycling batteries, had some very good news about recycling. As he said, we are not profitable yet because we are growing so quickly and we are reinvesting and will be for quite a few years. Well, that is exactly what Tesla did, so I bet there will be a few analysts out there screaming about them not being profitable. Short them, short them. But as he continued, but the actual operation of recycling these batteries, that is profitable today. There is really quite a hunger for these materials. Yes, this will become a huge business in the near future as everything is going electric and we can recycle about 95% of all the materials in the batteries. Unbelievable that I still get comments from people that are screaming about batteries being so polluting and can't seem to realize this point that these batteries will be recycled. And they still talk about cobalt. I thought Everyone kind of knew this by now that yes, they use a little bit of cobalt, but that is slowly going down and CATL's LFP batteries don't use cobalt and will also be recycled. But the oil industry uses a lot more cobalt at the oil refinery to remove the sulfur from the oil to make gasoline. In 2019, in only the US, about 216 million pounds of cobalt was used to remove move sulfur and that was only the part of the cobalt that was lost which is only about 1.2 percent so the oil industry is using an insane amount of cobalt so just remember the cobalt argument is speaking for the ev and against the ice car not the other way around and the joke about president biden don't want to say the word tesla got a little bit more juice this week as we suddenly saw an ad on the big screen in Times Square using Elon's tweet where he responded to Biden not inviting him for the last meeting at the White House where they invited Ford and GM, where Elon wrote starts with a T, ends with an A, ESL in the middle. And whoever made this ad had a nice little catchphrase just say it. And we did get over 50,000 people to sign the form about President Biden. Please acknowledge Tesla's EV lead. Come on, Biden, you can do it. Tesla. Okay, let's, let's try it one syllable at a time. Biden, repeat after me. Te, te, sla, sla, Tesla, GM. Oh, mon dieu. Oh, the foof. <laughs> If you want to take a deep dive into all of this corruption that is going on, well, Steven from Solving the Money Problem made a funny video about all this. I will leave a link to his video down below. But Biden might be willing to talk to Tesla now because they need their help. We all know that Tesla has managed chip shortages better than any other company on the planet and Biden's administration would really like to get Tesla's help to learn how they do that. So now they come crawling back. Well, let's see if Tesla want to help out after Biden's administration has left Tesla out of all the meetings about the EV future and have not been willing to even say their name on national TV and given GM all the credit for Tesla's hard work to make the EV the way of the future and making thousands of jobs in the US and making the most American made car. But maybe we can now get Biden to actually say the name Tesla. And let's get our weekly update from the Gigafactories. That means handing over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey Lars, well it's been kind of a different week in terms of Gigafactory construction progress. In Fremont we've seen the near completion of the new sky bridge connecting the sprung structure, not a tent, to the main building, presumably for shuttling parts around. Things have quieted down considerably in Shanghai. There are no real updates this week because of the Chinese New Year holiday, but we do know that in the northwest corner they're tearing up the parking lot where the loading docks were. Maybe there's going to be a building here. We don't know yet, but we'll keep an eye on it. In Berlin, things are tidying up nicely as they get their permits signed, and uh, work is going on still, of course, in the cell production area. And we now know that the factory will be launching with 2170s instead of 4680s, so this is not critical to production. Well, Texas was hit by a storm, but they're still going gangbusters. More pavement has been added to the south of the factory, where I believe the loading dock is going to be, some work to widen the road at the northwest corner, and there are so many worker cars on site, 
it's just plain encouraging. And for that matter, there's a big old pile of dirt to the east. This is just storage. It was put there uh, from the corner in the northwest. So, yeah, between Berlin and Texas, I think Texas is going to be the first one to produce its 10,000th car. But what do you think? Yep, I'm with you on that one, Brian. Texas will get to 10,000 Model Ys produced before the Berlin factory. Thank you so much for the update, Brian. See you next week. And a few quick updates about SpaceX. And SpaceX did another successful launch of another 47 Starlink satellites. This was the sixth launch for SpaceX this year that has a very impressive target of 52 launches this year. And it was the sixth time this first aid booster landed back down. And even the two fairings on this mission has been used four or six times times as well and this was the 106th successful landing of a falcon 9 rocket and elon did say on twitter that he would hold a special starship event on tuesday the 10th of february at 8 pm texas time oh yes please update on starship it doesn't get much more exciting than that and let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Tesla owners online shared a picture and wrote, some evidence of solar panels argument on Giga Texas will spell Tesla. Now that would just be cool. Hope that is the case. And if you think Tesla is doing great in Europe, China and the US, well, then try to check out Australia, because Tesla is ruling the market there as well. Also because it's not very hard, in all of 2021, there were sold 24,000 units in Australia. Yeah, the Australian government has not made it very appealing to buy an EV, but even though the numbers are not big, the annual EV sales in Australia did triple last year, so maybe they are starting to wake up down under. But out of those 24,000 units, Tesla stood for over 15,000 units of those EVs. So Tesla is sitting on about 63% of the entire EV market in Australia. Yep, you can't find many markets here on Earth where the little Tesla Model 3 is not sitting on the top spot. And here in Australia, the competition is not even in sight. And Tesla made another recall. Ah, oh, okay, but they just fixed it with an over-the-air update. Maybe Nitsa should work on that recall name. But anyway, that was to fix the seatbelt chim malfunction on 817,000 cars. But again, just an over-the-air update. All fixed, all done. And Texas governor even gave a little jab to Biden this week by tweeting Elon Musk may not have been invited to the White House, but he has been in the governor's office at Texas Capitol. And now Tesla's headquarters are in Texas too. Nice. Now we just need to change the law in Texas so Tesla will actually be able to sell his cars in Texas as well, governor. And Tesla Girl here on Twitter shared just why Tesla Sentry Mode is so important and should be a deal breaker for anyone when they go buy a new expensive EV. It has saved my ass a couple of times as well. I for one am never buying an EV that does not have this feature. And the Washington football team has a new name, the Commanders, the Washington Commanders. And they also have a new ride to bring out merchandise to the fans. And we of course all know what car they chose for that. Just say it. <laughs> yep, this is why Tesla don't need to spend money on advertising. And Dylan Loomis from Electrified shared some videos and pictures this week from inside the Texas Giga factory. And I thought the most amazing thing was to see some pictures from the testing of the 4680 sales production line. Yep, this factory is about to go wild. I will leave a link to Dylan's video down below. And Maryland is trying to do the right thing, but really only shows how little their politicians understand of the EV industry. Maryland House Bill 835 proposes a person constructing a retail service station that is projected to sell more than 1 million gallons of gasoline per year shall install one EV charging station capable of providing at least level 2 charging for each gasoline pump operating by the retail service station. The thought is great, but this is pretty meaningless. Firstly, level 2 
come on, this is already outdated. This is something that belongs in hotels where you can charge overnight, not a fueling station. Here we need at least 150 kilowatts and one charging stall per gasoline pump. This is not how it works. You need more charging stalls than gasoline pumps. The EVs cannot just come in and charge in five minutes and go on the road, especially if you only have level two charges. So you need a lot more charging stalls per station. Just as we see Tesla building 10 to 80 stalls per station. And we saw some pictures of a cool solar project in India. Solar panels being installed over channels in India. It prevents the water from evaporating, doesn't use extra land and keeps solar panels cooler. Great idea. And Alvin here tried a non-Tesla supercharging in Norway. Great in-app user experience, best on the market, will make many people more open to Tesla. Yep, as I have said before, maybe this is going to be one of the biggest marketing stunts Tesla has ever done. And Ray for Tesla shared a little video showing the Tesla going through a self-test of the seats and windows. Very cool. And if you haven't seen my part one of my extreme road trip up through Norway, you must. I have never got so many great comments on a video before and thank you all for your very, very kind words. But it is also one of my most liked videos ever with a 99.7% like rate. Thank you so much, guys. And to all of you that haven't watched it yet, well, don't miss out. I will leave a link to the video down below. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to give a quick shout out to my newest patrons and members of this new show. Larry Inoxen, Wins Ryder, Scott E. Ladd, Scotty Ladd, <laughs> Jonathan E. Wall, William Clauber, Matt Foss Sachs, Charles McKinley, Adam Davis, and Flinch. And I thank you for watching members Fred Ocker, John Gothold, Royson 2, Bill Hightower, and my best in Tesla superhero, James Brechheisen. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Supporter of the Week. And this week's winner is GJ Cordwell. GJ has been a thank you for watching member of this YouTube channel for three months and always have some great comments for me. And your latest comments on my video about my extreme road trip up through Norway was very kind. Thank you so much for the kind words. Please contact me on this email address so I can get your address and send you your free t-shirt or mug of your choice. And let's end off with a bit of fun. People are always saying acceleration doesn't matter. Sure it does. <laughs> Why? Because it's fun. Well, this one's like a lot faster. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Yes, have a little fun, my friends. And that is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. 
You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.